Hey everybody, my name's Luke. Um, we're in Slidell, Louisiana today. We're gonna be right up on the uh, side of the lake on Lake Poncha Train. I'm gonna be doing a review today of my bass boat build that I did. Um, it was a John boat uh, originally, just a solid aluminum frame, um, turned into a uh, bass boat. Um, very excited to show you guys what I've done. Um, I'm very proud of what I've done. Um, it did cost a lot more money than I originally thought, and I do believe that was because it was my very first time ever building it, and I had some some failures. Um, but overall, it turned out great. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to show you guys what I have. Um, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you my 16-foot uh, uh, Tracker Deep V. Um, originally bought it as just basically the aluminum uh, hole. Uh, there was nothing to it other than the motor and the seats within it. Um, I transformed it over time into basically a bass boat that's fully functional um, in both freshwater and saltwater. As you know, uh, Slidell area and the metro area of New Orleans, uh, it's a lot of brackish water mixed with uh, salt water and fresh water. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you the boat um, and kind of what I did to it over time. I'm going to be showing you pictures of what it looked like previously to me doing this. Um, also, basically everything that's going to entail in the future and additional things that I plan on doing um, to the boat as time goes on. Alright guys, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do a walk around and just kind of explain everything that's on the boat and, you know, kind of what I did different. So again, uh, the boat used to be just an aluminum hull. Um, it, came with, it comes with three seats within it. Uh, it's going to be the hard metal seats, um, the bench seats. It did come with three of these camouflage fold-up chairs. I took two of them out to give room. Um, originally there was one on each uh, each metal seat as you'll see here as time goes on. I'll show you guys the old pictures. So this right here is going to be my hummingbird. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It's not the best fish finder I have but it, it does the job for what I needed to do. Um, I am actually kind of looking at getting a different one for this because whenever I'm trolling and I'm bass fishing, I, it just doesn't do the job other than, you know, it'll give you the, the uh, temperature of the water along with the depth. Um, but that's, it's pretty straightforward. It also, you know, one of my big complaints with it is the fact that every time it shows any type of structure underneath, sometimes it'll get it mixed up with a fish. So it'll be saying that there's huge fish under the water when in reality, it, you know, you can see straight down to the bottom, there's nothing there. Um, these are my LED lights, I got them off of Amazon. I highly suggest that if you get LED lights for any type of like ATV or, you know, a boat or anything, you get them off of Amazon, you get the same brand, you can get the same type of, you know, you know durability that you can get, you know, in a store for twice as much. Um, very good price on Amazon for these. Um, over here I have the Minn Kota All-Terrain. It's a 40 pound um, uh, trolling motor. It's an incredibly good trolling motor for this boat. It really moves, really moves it very well. Um, over here, this is kind of the internal structure. I'm gonna come and explain all this in a minute. Um, this is my, my go-to uh, fish finder right here. Now this is the Garmin. Now the Garmin is incredible. It's got great image. You know, it does the same thing as the Hummingbird up front, but in, in reality, it just does so much more than what that Hummingbird is capable of. Um, it really, it really uh, helps, helps me be able to see the structure under the water a lot better than the Hummingbird does. Plus the durability of it, it's just such a clean image. Um, but it also, you know, it gives you the, the structure along with the, the uh, depth and um, the water temperature. So back here, uh, this is one of the, the most proud projects of this, uh, of this whole build. So basically with these seats, um, I don't know if you guys have ever had to, you know, mount a seat onto a metal bench before, but it's incredibly difficult, especially whenever you can't access underneath of the bench seats. Um, down here you can kind of see some of the old bench. So basically what happens is, is you're not able to get a bolt on from underneath. So you have to, you have to do something different. So what I had originally done, which was just basically the shortest way of doing it, which then ended up getting me later on, was just take some type of like wood bolts um, and just tighten them down basically. It's a very temporary thing. Um, as that metal warps a little bit over time, it is gonna pop out, which it did. So the way that we ended up fixing that is, is what we have is we have the bench seats and then we put a separate piece of wood that it was originally bolted onto right here. But what, what allowed us to fix 
the problem was what are called T-nuts. Now what these nuts are, I'm going to put a picture up of them for you guys, but what they are is basically you take a, this T-nut and you're going to mount it underneath of this wood right here. So you're going to basically drill a little hole underneath of this wood um, and then hammer it in. It's got little prongs on the bottom of it that will allow it to stick into the wood. Now once it's, once it's pronged up in there and it's stuck up under there, it's going to have access for a bolt to come through the other side. So basically it's self-tightening T-nut. So as you screw it down, it's going to be pulling up. It's going to be pulling up from underneath of this bottom because it's pushed up in there. And those little, those little teeth that are on the edge of it that are stuck up in the wood are going to hold it tight down. So basically that's going to, it's going to basically act as a nut in an area that you can't get a nut. Um, so then it'll hold this metal down. Now, what we did was, uh, it may have been overkill, but it's for the best. Uh, these self-tappers, um, normally for sheet metal, uh, we put 20 in. It comes in a pack of 40. I put uh, 20 in on this side, 20 in on that side. Um, so basically, it's, it's just guaranteed to stay down. And honestly, it's worked pretty incredible. Uh, it looks pretty cool, too, in, in my personal opinion. Um, on the back here, uh, something that we kind of did was we took... Uh, some pull finder or uh, some pull holders uh, turn them into basically rod holders uh, normally I'll use two for the rod holders and I'll use uh, the other two for a net and uh, possibly another rod if I'm having to bring it all right so this is the back of the boat um, one of the things I really wanted to point out on this that Garmin fish finder um, this was a pretty easy way of mounting the actual uh, trans transducer for it what I did was there was already some old holes here from another motor mount that they had for a five horsepower. What I did, I just took two of those holes and took a piece of iron. Um, I cut it to the right size to where it would be right at the bottom of the boat um, at a pretty good angle to where the force of the water when you're moving wouldn't hurt it, but it would still be low enough to where it would read really well. Um, cut the iron, uh, covered it with some paint and primer um, to prevent the rusting because you know the salt water will really, really, really rust away uh, some of your metal. Uh, mounted it right down here at the bottom. I uh, took some zip ties, tied it up. Uh, works actually really well, um, especially for the depth. The depth, you know, you couldn't put it at a better angle. I'd highly suggest that, you know, just a few inches from the bottom. Um, that way that the force of the water won't touch it while you're going. All right, so this is the boat's interior right here. So as you can see, um, it's very, very sleek up top. I'm very happy with how it turned out. So I didn't want to take out any of the metal seating itself that came with the boat the reason for that is is that's the structure of your boat so that's the integrity and it holds everything together so you got this boat seat right here you can see the other one where they just previously mounted also underneath of here in a minute i'll show you that's where the other uh, metal seat's going to be at now you don't ever want to take that out because that's going to compromise the integrity of your boat um, that's what holds your boat together it's what makes it not be able to flex to the point where it's going to you know start leaking you know pretty severely so I'll start from the back. Um, basically, like I said again, uh, I wanted to cover up, give the battery, the fuel tank, and a bunch of different parts in the back. I wanted to make sure everything was covered up. Originally, I wasn't going to do that, and I had everything else, but I just kind of felt like it was just messy looking because the back was pure metal and while the rest of it was carpeted. So I went ahead and made a really nice little box that covers it. Now, I do want to do some additional things, which I may show in a future video, but what I do want to plan on doing is my wiring, as you'll see, is a little bit messy on the battery. Now the reason for that is I, I didn't intend on having to get a switch panel for that battery. Um, I just simply figured that, you know, hooking it up each time would be easy enough. Um, I've come to really not enjoy that. Every time you go out, you got to re-hook everything up. So for a future project, I plan on actually putting uh, uh, some type of panel. Um, it might be right here. Um, on this side or it might be on here. I haven't really decided yet, but a little three switch I already ordered it off of Amazon. It's gonna be a little three switch panel uh, It's basically gonna go to this the tr back troll motor um, This Garmin and then to this other switch panel now that other switch panel is continuously on it does drain my battery That's why I unplug it every single time prior to charging it um, So back here in the back like I said, I'll go ahead and pop this up um, I do plan on painting everything just a gray, just a solid gray, just to make sure that you know it kind of blends in. I mean, it looks it looks sleek. You'll never see the bottom of this unless you're fueling up or you're messing with the battery. Um, down here on the right hand side, what I plan on doing is separating this battery from this fuel tank. Um, it always worries me that this might spark, it causing this fuel tank to uh, you know catch on fire. Uh, it's very it's not likely, but it's it's it is there. 
So I plan on actually putting this up a little bit higher, putting a little uh, support up over here, building like a little box that goes underneath of the fuel tank, lifting it up up here. To, especially, you know, it might be a little bit easier to fuel up to like that. Um, that way there's a good space here in the middle. And then all this, you know, random equipment that I need uh, can go right here in the middle next to the battery. Um, yeah, I, I plan on painting some of this. Uh, I, I started to do it over here um, just to make it a little bit more clean and look a little bit more sleek. Um, now under here, the floorboards, there's two, two separate panels. You got your first sheet down below and then you got two by fours that run across like this that attach to a solid frame on both sides to where it's very, very sturdy. And then there's another piece of wood on top, which was then covered by carpet. Um, as far as the center area right here, um, I did put in four cup holders. Now cup holders, I know you, you never get four people on this boat. Um, but you gotta always remember there's a lot of stuff that you can put here while you're fishing in regards to you know different tackle um, that can just be close you know close quarters so if you need it you can just grab it. Um, now as far as the electrical on this boat it's incredible. I, I will say I did get this Boss audio system. Um, it comes with two speakers. I ordered two more to come with it. I put four, uh, one right there, one right there, and then the two right here. Um, this is the headset for the Boss audio system. Now. I may do another video in regards to it, but it, it's really incredible. I mean, the the sound audio is much louder than what this this you know 16 foot boat really needs. But it, it's just fun, and uh, I really, really, really appreciate that audio system. Now, this is my switch panel. Um, it does need to be cleaned up a little bit, but I, I highly suggest that anybody who goes for a switch panel get it off of Amazon. Um, the ones that they sell inside of these boat stores, especially here in Slidell, they can cost you anywhere from 150 to well over 200 dollars. Um, extremely expensive uh, this one's pretty awesome it's got the 12 volt uh, where you can plug in like a you know something that you have to plug into your car to charge your phone on this side it's got the USB ports it tells you your voltage on your battery I don't have it turned on right now but it will tell you your voltage um, each one of these switches I believe I have one two three four I have the first four used the last two are not working um, at this point I don't have anything connected to them um, and some may ask why don't you hook up the rest of the stuff to that rather than having to put a new switch panel in the back I try to keep my wiring separate uh, I don't know if anybody's ever worked with wiring but it's very aggravating whenever you have multiple wires going to several different locations um, it's very easy just to clean it up and have each wire go to a specific thing that way it's one and done you know right where it goes if you ever need to work on it it's right there for you all right we're gonna go to this first compartment now remember in the original picture you saw that this was all open um, and some may say hey listen your deck is way too high me personally I like it you know people say you know you might lose some of your tackle if you accidentally kick it off but the way I look at it is is you know that is a possibility but the, the advantages of being up this high are much better than um, you know the risk of that so we'll start here at this little first compartment um, got these um, off of Amazon these nice little poles uh, pull it up now down here I got my tackle uh, also down here I have some miscellaneous items like sunscreen and uh, different items that you just may need while going out I also use that as my uh, tackle so um, say that you get some shrimp uh, I'll put them in there uh, keep them cool for a little while now on this side is everything that's mandated uh, in Louisiana along with many other states that you have to have um, in regards to flares um, throw pillow uh, different you know just different miscellaneous items now on this side I have a lot of room under here but kind of like going back to what I said about all this wiring you know wiring can get real messy real quick so I try to keep everything separated that's why I didn't really put anything there is space over there to put more stuff back up in there but I just leave it alone because I don't want to screw anything up but this is a this battery is solely to this front trolling motor so this entire battery is dedicated to that front trolling motor um, as you know especially if you go red fishing or bass fishing out here in Louisiana um, you know that you will really use a lot of your trolling motor um, sometimes that current is just real strong so this right here Kind of like what I said, this is the old bench. Uh, as you can see, you can kind of see where the old seat was set up right there with this different holes. Um, you know, you don't ever want to take this out again just because you don't want to hurt the integrity of your boat. So that's pretty much it to the first one. There's a lot of room to work with down under here. I just don't have everything that I need. Um, there's just not, not as much stuff as I would need. All right, now we're gonna be going up to more towards the front of the boat. 
this right here is my awesome mount for my bass boat or uh, my bass seat. Um, it's really incredible. Works perfect. I got it mounted down to several two by fours that are stacked up that run along the frame, so that it's uh, super super sturdy. Um, it's a, yeah, it's just not going to be going anywhere. But I uh, got that from Academy Sports um, on sale. Actually, um, it went real well. All right, now we're going to be going up here to this front um, front section. Now this one I made very big. Um, it's incredible how much you can hold in it. Yeah, there's some sawdust in there for me recently working on. I need to come and vacuum it all out. But down here is where I store all of my miscellaneous parts. Um, I'd say there's only maybe <laughs> maybe one fourth of the space used, but I, I I like the space that I have for it simply because it's manageable. Um, the seat right here, each time you want to use it, you just simply pull it out. And it slides right in. Um, perfect, perfect fit. Uh, as far as the um, net, same thing. You just pull it out, put it in. I've got two anchors down here with several, several feet of rope. Um, some bumpers. Uh, my lights for nighttime. Um, along with all the wiring to the trolling motor, the lights, the fish finder, that all run back to, uh, well, I'm sorry, I apologize. The lights and the fish finder run all the way back to this back battery. The trolling motor itself, I don't know if you can see, it runs along right here, and it all tucks away back underneath the deck into my battery. So it's all very clean. Um, you can't see any of it, um, and it's, it's really sturdy. Now, one thing I will say, if you do cut a deck like this, I highly suggest putting maybe more pieces of wood or, uh, you know, basically just, just take a 2 by 4 and run it all the way along. That was one mistake I had because there are some, some weak spots right here on these corners where, you know, whenever you step on it, you can kind of feel it squishes down a little bit. It's not to the point where it's going to break, but it, it definitely could use a little bit more sturdiness. Now, in regards to the lights and the wiring, like I said, I have uh, everything that goes through that front right there. Um, it all runs back here. Now, the lights, the light, the front LED lights, along with the Garmin and the stereo system, all run to uh, the switch panel right here. Um, as a little bit of added detail, I put. Um, the ruler right here so that uh, it's really easy when out while you're fishing just to be able to measure your fish real fast. Uh, you know one of the things that I did to really improve the look of my boat was uh, small things like lights. Uh, I got these LEDs originally it was bulb lights um, which weren't bad they weren't bad at all um, but really you want to improve the look of your boat especially at night um, just replace everything with LEDs. Now, this is not LED. I have these side lights. These are still original bulbs. They are very bright, um, very durable looking. Um, very happy with the light setup though. Now, whenever you do a boat build, I would highly suggest that you do it to the standards that you want it. Whenever I started this boat build, I didn't know exactly what I wanted. I had an idea. I actually drew it out on paper, said this is what I want to do. But as time goes on and as you start to build, you start to see, okay, that's not going to be as practical as I thought it was going to be. Also, use YouTube videos. Um, a lot of my designs and a lot of my ideas came from YouTube videos and different ideas that different people had on theirs. But I will say that some of the ideas that I had on my boat did not come from anybody. Couldn't find any videos on it. Couldn't find anything regarding how to do it. Um, that's why I think it's really important that if you have a good idea, why not post a video about it? Um, I'm personally very proud of this boat. Are there things that I could fix? Yes, there are things that I could fix. Are there things that I wish I would have done a little bit different? Yeah, there are. But overall, my boat's very functional. The thing is that whenever you build a fishing boat, you want to make it to where it's practical for when you're fishing. The number one key thing that I wanted from this boat was space. There's nothing more aggravating on a fishing boat, especially a smaller boat like a 16-foot boat, when there's just too much crowdedness. You got too many, too much gear laying out. You got poles everywhere laying out. It's just, it's very aggravating in my opinion. So one of the big things I wanted was I wanted to be able to have a compartment to be able to put everything away. I wanted to be able to put, you know, the poles in the back where they're out of the way. I want to be able to just walk around without any type of issues, which is exactly what I got from this boat. And, and truthfully, for this being my first boat build ever, I, I really wouldn't change the design at all. There are little things that I would change, but the overall design of it is incredibly perfect. Um, I highly suggest that if you do build a boat, um, to just think about you know what you would want. When you go out fishing, what is something on a boat that you say, man, I wish this was just a little bit different? Just build it. 
That's all I can. That's all I can suggest. Um, yeah, I'm just very happy with this boat and how it turned out. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know.